that data from Northern Electricity Distribution Company, Netco, indicates the company has been incurring losses for the past four years. Though the total debt stock over the period is unclear, reports say the 2018 figure alone could hit 230 million Ghana CDs. Corporate communications manager Maso Kutuka says the situation makes it difficult for the company to operate efficiently. Prince Apia has more in this report. The Northern Electricity Distribution Company, Netco, covers 64% of Ghana's geographical area, including Ashanti, Northern, Volta and Western regions. Company documents indicate persistent losses for four consecutive years since 2014 in the course of providing electricity. Loss levels for 2014 was 72.5 million Ghana cities, 25.5 million Ghana cities in 2015, and now 230 million Ghana cities in 2018. Corporate communications manager Maxwell Kutuka explains further. And we have run at a very significant loss over the past few years. At a point, it was decreasing. The loss was decreasing, but that is not to say we were making profits. Uh, but in the face of the reduction in the distribution service charge in 2018, that recovery was reversed. And so the loss, we lost by a greater margin in the year. I said earlier that is a myriad of issues, including commercial losses, which is in part people not paying for the power they consume. Uh, one of them is the distribution losses that we have encountered, both technical and commercial. Another is due to good old inflation. And then also the effect of the foreign exchange on our operations. Don't forget, most of our investments are in equipment that are based or denominated in the dollar. Mr. Kutuka says the company plans to introduce high-tech metering systems to reduce power theft as part of measures to reduce the losses. Well, effective operations, yes. Efficient operations, I'm not too sure. Uh, as was demonstrated in the presentation, we ran at a loss of, we expect to run at a loss of 203 million cities in 2018. I'm not too sure if that is sufficient. The introduction of high-tech meters metering systems that will take care of, if not entirely, at least reduce power theft. We also have instituted a number of measures, including prosecution of customers here and there. We also are thinking seriously, in fact, there are plan plans are afoot to uh, create an um, uh, electronic platform where uh, we will simplify some of the operations and make them easier and make ourselves more readily accessible and appreciated by the customer. Management targets to reduce commercial losses to 15% by 2030. The measures are expected to improve debt collection to 98% by 2020. Prince Apia, reporting. Let's also stay with energy and the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, PURC, has debunked claims new managers taking over the electricity company of Ghana will result in hiked tariffs. The minority in parliament had earlier claimed the energy sector is in crisis because of ECGs paralleling the debt. Meanwhile, the Ghana Grid Company Limited, Gridco, is asking for as much as two times what it currently charges for transmitting power countrywide, saying it will struggle to operate without that. The PRC, however, says the review will be announced by February 1. Now, I've been joined in the studio by Megdad Mohammed. He's a researcher with the Institute of Energy Studies. Uh, to tell us more about this particular development. Mikdati, welcome to the marketplace. Well, thank you for having Now, me. what is the justification for these demands by the power producers? 95% is quite huge, mm. as well as 40%. Well, there's a need for us to pay realistic tariffs. And today we are paying the ESLA debts because some generation that came before were not paying realistic tariffs. Okay. We would either want to continue the status quo by also paying ridiculous amounts for tariffs so that tomorrow, Another generation also paid the debts we have paid for those who, who came before us. Mm. So the call for uh, the, the readjustment of tariff is, 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 is very valid. For example, I know that uh, the receivables of Gridco is almost hitting a billion just for the 2018 power year. Mm. And I know as for ECG's debts, we've come to discuss it all, all, all over and over again. VRA's debt is because of ECG's indebtedness. 
and uh, other independent power producers are having challenges. Mm. But the most important discussion about this mm. is because uh, if you look at the movement of the debts of NEDCO, for example, mm. for the 2018 power year, they have incurred a debt of about $213 million. million dollars. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, no, cities. 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 And if you look at the fact that in 20, 2017, their loss was about $10 million, uh, 10 million Ghana cities. Mm. And then just the following year, it's $230 million. It's because of the reductions we had in power mm. in the year 2018. Now, now see, you look before, at the relationship of the CD yes. and the dollar and mm. other factors. Yeah. So even before we witnessed this, or even before the minority stated that there mm. are going to be um, astronomical increases in tithes, mm. we had the impression that with a new manager or management of ECG taking mm. over come February 1, we don't, we don't expect so much increase in tithes again. So why is it that all of a sudden, and um, power producers are demanding these increases. Well, uh, it, it was not cast in stone that there was not going to be a review in, in, in tariffs. It is one of the things that we have called on uh, the, the energy ministry and government as a whole to come very clear on. For example, in the discussion on the concession, we were utmostly concerned about job losses and we did not discuss tariffs the way we should discuss it. So we have an understanding. Yes, we understand jobs will not be lost because we had raised questions on it. But we can't say the same for, for tariffs. Mm. We know that over the, the next five years, Meralco and PDS will be investing about $580 million in the distribution infrastructure of NEDCO and ECG. And we also know that one of the reasons why we are bringing in the concession, yes, is because we don't want to continue the management practices that put ECG in the position for which we brought in the concession, yes. Exactly. And one of those things is the payment of realistic tariffs. Mm. If ECG is in debt because we're not paying realistic tariffs, should that continue when there's a new management? And if it's not going to continue, it will mean that we should expect some adjustment in tariffs. Mm -hmm. And that adjustment in tariff will ensure that we will chip at some of the debts mm -hmm. which have accumulated over the period, and we're not going to add any extra debts to All right, it. Now, the power producers have persistently mentioned two key factors. They are talking about um, inflation effect or the inflationary mm -hmm. effect and the CD the dollar mm -hmm. depreciation. Now, in the past, in recent times, we've seen quite an improvement in, in our stability of, of uh, the local currency mm. as well as inflation. So why would they use these you know, factors uh, to demand a review? It's a multiplicity of factors. First, it's about revenue collection. First, then second being the inflationary consideration and then the forex. Now, and, and there's only a fourth factor, which is a net loss because CCG last year Mm. was they were buying power at 59 cents per kilowatt per hour and we we're selling at 42 cents per kilowatt per hour so for every single transaction ecg embarked on without even inflationary considerations without uh, 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 forex uh, considerations they were losing 17 cents per kilowatt per hour mm. so the first step is towards paying realistic tariffs now then secondly when you have uh, a very good relationship as you have mentioned that the cd and the dollars relationship has been very Positive. Now we can look at how PURC can now police the, 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 the formulation of an acceptable tariff that will make sure that uh, we, our, the efficiency that we we'll get from uh, Miracle's operation will not be just uh, tentative, okay. it will be long lasting because we have been able to establish systems that if the city's relationship is not good, we we'll have a tariff structure which accommodates their losses and keeps them in operation without accumulating more debts. While uh, in, on the side of the people, consumers, industrial users, uh, they, were, they are ensuring that we are not uh, being uh, exploited okay. by cutthroat prices. Now, Pepe, your calculations as the institute, mm. um, if you want to stick your neck out, what kind of review do we expect? How, by how much margins uh, are you expecting well, well, if uh, the PRC we, should heat? As, 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 as now, we have not looked at the specific percentages, but we don't expect, uh, it is not realistic to project 60%. I know it's on the high and it also creates the fear among the public. But mm -hmm. we expect that in the long term it could go as high as that. As but it will start with some progressively. Progressively. Mm -hmm. I mean for the for the for the first uh, three, four months we expect the Miracle they are doing some management shake ups. Mm -hmm. They are assessing staff strength and seeing the rules they are playing, whether they, they fit into those rules, whether mm -hmm. they have to replace them, they are doing all of that. Mm -hmm. And then from then they will begin to look at uh, the discussion on tariff. That is why we want to know from the energy ministry and from government as a whole mm. what agreement it has reached with Meraco regarding the place of tariffs in mm -hmm. this arrangement because we don't want to believe Meraco is simply uh, uh, giving out a Christmas bonus mm. to Ghanaian mm. and then they're going to invest $580 million. Mm. And when the city is weak against the dollar, they will show that that costs and will continue to pay the tariff we have been paying, which has caused us uh, the mess ECG and NEDCO 
have found themselves in. All right, since you are here, I would also want you to share your thoughts on this particular development where the minority recently came out you know, vigorously against mm -hmm. um, government for painting the picture that the, the Akers new find is a new discovery. Mm -hmm. Akers recently came out with um, a release mm -hmm. talking about the fact that they have come out successfully with their um, appraisal report for the well mm -hmm. that is, is exploring. Yes. Now, what, what's your take on that? Well, I, I, I think your question even answers it. Mm -hmm. They brought out an appraisal report. Mm -hmm. An appraisal report of an existing well cannot okay. be a new discovery. For us, uh, when we heard of a new discovery, we know the es established wells and the uh, commerciality appraisal ongoing on them. So we thought it was a new well, ac actually. Okay. Only to go and realize it is the, 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 the Hess well. Energy Pecan well, okay. which was uh, uh, discovered on 6 December 2012. Okay. So for us, it is not a, a, a new discovery. It is a commerciality appraisal. And by whatever extension, we don't want to believe that there's a misinterpretation here. It is not a new discovery. Right. Many thanks for your time. Megdad Mohammed is a researcher with the Institute of Energy Security. He's been sharing his thoughts on several energy um, issues here on the marketplace. And on that point.